Welcome to Free Thought Matters, a TV show devoted to the views of atheists, agnostics, and other free thinkers. I'm Annie Laurie Gaylor. And I'm Dan Barker. Annie Laurie and I direct the Freedom From Religion Foundation, which produces this weekly TV talk show. FFRF is the largest association of non religious Americans. We also work to safeguard the constitutional principle of the separation between state and church. Don't let fundamentalism engulf America. Please join us at FFRF.org so that reason and our secular constitution will prevail. We have a fascinating guest today, the photographer and filmmaker Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson is the author of a gorgeous coffee table book. It's called A Better Life, 100 Atheists Speak Out on Joy and Meaning in a World Without God. And he's the producer of the accompanying film, A Better Life. Well, thanks so much for joining us today, Chris. Thanks for having me. So to make this book and this film, you traveled all over the world and you interviewed and photographed and, and taped a hundred atheists talking about their lives. So yeah. what prompted this book? Why did you even think about doing this? Well, basically, you know, uh, so many places across the world, um, atheists are under attack. I mean, here, in, even in the United States, um, it's, it's, it can be um, a risk to your life if you're an atheist. And we really need to dispel a lot of these stereotypes and misconceptions about what it means to be an atheist. So many people hate atheists. So many people hate what we don't believe in, right? So many people um, have these misconceptions about who and what we are. And I think part of dispelling that is showing how wonderful and amazing our lives can be without God. Or if they don't hate us, they think they tolerate us like we're something wrong with right. us. We, we can't really be good without their religion. But, right. But you're right. In some countries, there's actual overt hatred and and violence. Yeah. I also think it really matters. I mean, I think these questions are important questions. You know, if this is the only life we have, it matters how we live it. If people are going to only live their lives based on uh, a reward in the afterlife, that's going to fundamentally change how they live their lives. And so I think it's important for us to stand up and say, we're atheists and this is how we see the world. This is how we want to live our lives. So the subtitle of your book is 100 Atheists Speak Out on Joy and meaning uh, living without God, yeah. which I love. But so this is more than just um, talking about atheists and atheism. It's also kind of debunking myths, as you said, about atheists. So how did you come up with that idea? You're right. I mean, a lot of it isn't really about atheism in particular. It's about the humanity of all of these people um, who happen to be atheists, about the things we do, how we want to spend our time, how we, what's important to us, family members, relationships, friends, even things like, you know, we talked about music and cooking, these things that are really important to us, things that make our lives um, worth living. So why don't we look at the trailer for the film, the accompanying film for your book. Okay. Atheists don't like our happiness. They don't want you to be happy. They want you to be miserable. They're miserable, so they want you to be miserable. Not believing in God was such a sea change of worldview that it changed my life fundamentally and forever. This idea that uh, some people have that atheists must be nihilists who have no purpose and they're all dour all the time and oh this life has no meaning and purpose and why don't we just end it all. I just, I cannot grasp that. The more I've understood about how the universe works, the, the the more that awe has come and the more joy, rather than it going, oh, it's just clockwork, the sun's there and we go around it every year and all that stuff. No, I think that's amazing how that, that is extraordinary how that's happened. Since we can contemplate ourselves and we are made of the stuff of the cosmos, by transitive properties, we are a way for the cosmos to know itself. I certainly feel more liberated. That's, a, that's amazing. I don't need spiritualism or God or anything to explain that. I'm just like, wow, what a great place we live in. You make the standards. 
that you create the goals, that you decide what is meaningful or not. Once you get that, it's enormously freeing. As the cobblers used to say, work while you have light. So while you're here, while you have your 300 months, you must put all your energy into it. So you interviewed famous people and not famous people. And um, we saw some scientists there. You talked with Richard Dawkins, mm -hmm. uh, flew to the UK. Um, you also have non-famous uh, non people. Right. I think, did you tell me that you once just went up to somebody on the street uh, who, and found out that he was an atheist or? Uh, I didn't go to somebody on the street, but um, I, I really wanted it to be a cross a good cross representation of atheists, you know, not just scientists, because I think that's again a lot of the stereotypes about who and what atheists are. We're all just a bunch of scientists, you know, sitting in our ivory towers, and I really and wanted logicians to show, and argumentative, and, right, uh, you know. right. So I wanted to show we're you know we're a diverse group of people. We're all you know uh, environmental activists, and we're you know. Um, uh, airline pilots, and we are, you know, all kinds of different people, artists, and musicians. Coffee baristas, you yeah. have somebody like that, you have a rancher. Right, all kinds of different things. So I really wanted to show that we really are a diverse group of people, not just scientists. Although I love scientists, they're really important and they're in the book, but um, it's also important to show kind of how diverse our community is. So in the trailer that we just saw, you have yeah. these people, Julius Weenie and, uh, you know, a lot of these famous people and, yeah. and regular people, but there's also right. a picture of you Yes. Standing there at, at White Sands. And isn't that kind of the origin of the whole project? Yeah, I was on a road trip uh, with my brother uh, traveling from Texas up to Washington State, uh, where I grew up. And uh, we stopped at White Sands National Monument in New Mexico, which is one of the most incredible places I've ever been. Uh, it looks like snow, but it's mm. these gorgeous sand dunes. All you see is the sand just stretching for miles into these mountains off in the distance. It looks like you're on another planet. They don't it's, glow, do they? Because they don't glow, no. <laughs> but it's amazing. It's it's just stunning, and you're you're there, and you're immersed in this gorgeous landscape. And it got me thinking, like, you know, this is one of those moments that I think many religious people would feel a sense of this is God's creation. This is the beauty that God has created for us. Well, me as an atheist, how do I see this? And you know, it's important that we as atheists talk about those feelings because, again, a lot of the stereotypes is we're just argumentative, we just want to, you know, talk about how God doesn't exist, and it's important for us to talk about how we see the world. And so being there in that spot got me thinking about, you know, this is a gorgeous feeling and this is a wonderful place and let's talk about that and how that how I see that as an atheist. I think that's really important. And your brother said you should make a book. Then. He did. Uh, he said you should make a, a, a photography book. Huh. And I said, hmm. And I kind of put those two things together and a photography book about how you see the world as an atheist. Wow. Now, among them is a rock climber who's become very famous since your book came out, Alex Hunold. Yes. And uh, you did a little interview with him, and we have a little clip of that. Okay. My name is Alex Honnold and I'm an atheist rock climber. I love rock climbing, I love being outside, I love traveling, um, and I guess I find meaning in all those things. Well, I come back to Yosemite every, pretty much every season, every spring and fall, um, just because the walls are huge, the, the, the cliffs are really inspiring, the weather is really good, it's also really convenient, it's kind of close to my home. I mean, there are a lot of things that draw me here, but um, I mean, it is like legitimately some of the best climbing in the world. I was taken to church for maybe like five or six years as a kid that I can remember, and at no point did I ever think that there was anything going on with church. I just always saw it as like a bunch of old people eating stale wafers. You know, I was like, that's totally weird to me. I would like look at the rafters and imagine climbing around on things, and like our church was built like a bunker kind of, and I could imagine like a nuclear apocalypse happening outside and us all surviving, you know, just whatever. But I had nothing to do with church. I was like, now a letter from Paul to the Corinthians. You're like, whatever. <laughs> yeah, for sure I've had moments of, you know, sublime bliss, whatever you want to call it. Like, generally in places with epic vistas, you know, or on top of some mountain or 
or sometimes after a hard day of climbing or something, you get to the top and it's sunset and everything looks magical. And you know, for sure I've had some magic moments like in nature. I mean, I've probably had more moments like that than most really because I live in places like this all the time. You know, and I'm like outdoors doing this kind of stuff all the time. I guess by not believing in an afterlife, it just sort of forces you to, to make the most of this life, you know, to actually get the most out of the time you have. And uh, I probably have, I mean, that probably has affected the way I live my life a little bit by really accepting the fact that I'm just another animal on the earth and that I will die in my time and that, you know, I only have a limited amount of time and I have to use it. So you interviewed Alex uh, before his big movie came out, the Free Solo movie, yeah. award-winning movie, yeah. and didn't know at the time. And what he said there about how we, you know, we're going to die someday. Well, one of his mountain climbing friends just did fall off a mountain in Mexico, but he knew the risk and uh -huh. he enjoyed the life. So imagine living your life at that edge and enjoying it so much like Alex did. Yeah, I mean, I think he's really an inspirational person. Um, I mean, Alex is one of those people who not only is, this, is he this incredible athlete, but he is just brilliant and, and interesting and curious about the world and really a wonderful person to sit down and talk to. And pretty funny. <laughs> and funny, yeah, no, he's a, he's a really great guy. Now you, you also, besides, um, as we talked about some of the scientists, you have mm -hmm. James Randi, you have right. Steven Pinker, who's our yeah. honorary president of mm -hmm. FFRF, and his wife, a science popularizer, Rebecca Newberger goldstein yep. um, James, James Watson. Randi. Yeah. James uh, Watson. You have um, activists, mm -hmm. Dan and myself, yep. <clears throat> are very privileged to be yes. in the book. Um, Miriam Namazi, who's mm -hmm. in uh, One Law for All in London. Right. Um, Margaret Downey. Right. Hammett Mehta. Mm -hmm. So, a career cross section. Yeah, I mean, again, that's one of the things I really wanted <clears throat> to do with the book was really show a diverse group of people. Yeah. And also uh, the lighter side, too. You have comedians. Uh -huh. Leanne Lord, who is the very mm -hmm. funny lady, the stand-up comic in New York City. Yeah. Penn and Teller. Penn and Teller. Yeah. Uh, Julia Sweeney, you know, yes. who was on Saturday Night Live. So right. you have the sort of the arts and entertainment side as well. Songwriters, uh, Charles Strauss. Charles Strauss. Who wrote uh, the musical Annie and by, by Birdie, this, you know, famous legend of music. You got to go into his apartment in New York City. And, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And he's still going strong. He's uh, in his early 90s, I believe now. Wow. Yeah. 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 Amazing. So <clears throat> some of the people are, are no longer here. You got to interview uh, Janet Asimov. Yes. And that must have been uh, really important. Mm -hmm. um, she just died in 2019. She did. Isaac yeah. Asimov's widow. Yeah. yeah. And she gave me one of his books. Wow. Which was wonderful. Very sweet of her. Yeah. Incredible. Um, and unfortunately, too, the other, the other two who have pa since passed away, uh, Farley and Duff, um, uh. Pat Churchland's two golden retrievers oh. from, the, ah. from the book ah. and the film, unfortunately. They uh, were in the movie. Away. I saw they them. Were, they were, yeah. yeah. They now passed they, away last year, unfortunately. They live on in the movie. They do. <clears throat> they do. But uh, another thing that is, is so good about your book, and we, we do have it here, and it is a coffee table. It's heavy. Book. It's, it's <laughs> beautiful. You know, if I open the pages, you're going to see pictures everywhere. But you also include text. You interviewed people about what gives them joy or yeah. what... It, what what their meaning is right so it, it's got a lot of depth yeah I think it's it's wonderful not just to look at the photos but also kind of to read the essays and, and hear what people have to say about how they live their lives so the book has a lot of heft in more ways than one it's, right. it's a heavy one right so we have to take a break here Chris uh, we're talking with Chris Johnson the filmmaker and the photographer about his book, A Better Life, 100 Atheists Speak Out on Joy and Meaning in a World Without God, and his movie, A Better Life. We'll be right back after this break. Hi, I'm Ron Reagan, an unabashed atheist, and I'm alarmed by the intrusions of religion into our secular government. That's why I'm asking you to support the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest and most effective association of atheists and agnostics, working to keep state and church separate, just like our founding fathers intended. Please support the Freedom From Religion Foundation. Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. I'm Doug Hinahara, and I'm an out-of-the-closet atheist. 
I consider myself fortunate in that I wasn't raised in an overly religious family. So I was allowed to think for myself. And around the time I was 17, as I was exploring these ideas of religion, I was told by a fundamentalist Christian that my grandmother, who had emigrated from Japan, was destined to eternal damnation because she was a Buddhist. And I couldn't accept that, and it kind of unraveled from there for me. So at this point in my life, I've been, become very comfortable with the idea that I don't need religion uh, or belief in God to be a moral person and live an ethical life. I'm proud of the fact that I have two daughters who have grown up to be wonderful young women, and I'm proud to say also atheist. Thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. You can find more content by the Freedom From Religion Foundation at our website, ffrf.org. Follow FFRF on Facebook and you'll get notifications about all of our content, including whenever we go live on FFRF's Ask an Atheist. FFRF is also on YouTube, where all of our programs, including this show and our weekly news bites, are available to watch anytime. Thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the web. And welcome back to Free Thought Matters. We're speaking with the photographer and filmmaker Chris Johnson about his inspiring book, if I can borrow a word, an inspiring book and a movie, A Better Life, 100 Atheists Speak Out on Joy and Meaning in a World Without God. So, Chris, before we uh, play a clip of Julia Sweeney, a very poignant interview with her, I did want to ask you a little bit more about your personal background with religion. Sure. So were you brought up free from religion, or did you escape? It's one thing I'm very, uh, uh, very, very grateful for for my parents is my brother and I were raised uh, really without any religion at all. Um, I mean, I remember being given a children's Bible when I was a kid from some probably from a family member at some point, and uh, I remember asking my dad where the dinosaurs fit into the <laughs> chronology of it. But no, we were raised without it, and I feel um, very grateful for my family for that. Yeah, me too. I had the same nice experience. Now, Julia Sweeney was raised Catholic and yes. was very devoted to Catholicism until she took a second look at religion. Mm -hmm. And you interviewed her about her views now, so let's look at that clip. You really do see everything differently. I notice, for example, people coming up saying, I'm praying for you and I'm praying for your brother. And I realize they're really just saying, I'm thinking of you and I'm thinking of your brother. But I know, like, just having gone, my brother died like a month and a half ago. And people, um, they seem to want to, um, like, they would go to church and say a prayer for my brother, but not necessarily go do something for him before he died. So for me, I understand that if what helps you think about somebody who's about to die is to go into a church and just meditate on that person for yourself, that makes a lot of sense. But it doesn't make a lot of sense to the person who's dying. Really, you need to be with the person who's dying. So that, that changed my attitude about being around people who are dying. Um, I really think of people like flowers in a big field of wildflowers and they bloom and then they die. And so just that view of people makes it really poignant for me. It's actually much more profound death to me than it was before. If you really think somebody's going to die and then go off somewhere else, that's a very different point of view than if you think the universe produced this person who lived for this many years and had this many experiences, and now they're going away, and the universe is continuing on. I mean, that's just a very different view of it. And to me, it makes it very poignant and very meaningful and really emotional. So, so that's the actress and comedian Julia Sweeney. She was on Saturday Night Live. And she's in a lot of stuff now, Shrill on Hulu, yep. and, uh, and something new is coming up, I think, on Showtime. So um, you did a world tour. You said you were on five continents? Yeah, so I premiered the film at Conway Hall in London, a very historic secular building yeah. in London. And you and played piano there, Dan? Yeah. Oh, what? yeah, it's, it's a wonderful place. And I thought, 
okay, I'll do like six or so of these like screenings and Q&A sessions. And it just grew and grew and grew as I kept doing them. Um, I ended up uh, showing the film in uh, over 120 cities wow. on five continents. So I just have one more to go, Antarctica, yeah. and that's well, it. Well, we showed it here. So. You weren't here, I don't think. We showed it here at Free Thought Hall in Madison, yes. Wisconsin. Uh, I also to... had two other screenings here in Madison. So Madison, oh. said, Madison has had uh, three different screenings of the film. Wow. Well, hopefully many, many people have been enlightened uh, about what atheists are like, enlightened about how you have to make your own purpose in life. It doesn't come from above. I mean, that, spreading a lot of good information there. Thank you. That's one of the things that it is so rewarding about doing this project is getting emails and responses from people from literally all, all over the world who you know, see the book or see the film and it makes them think about things in a different way. It, it makes them reevaluate their life, makes them want to pursue maybe something that they have always wanted to do but never did. Um, and so kind of putting something out there uh, as a piece of art that makes people think about themselves in a different way, I think is very rewarding and humbling for me. So who's your audience of the book? It's not just atheists. Uh, are you saying something to religious people who might pick this up and want to read it? I hope so. I hope I'm not just, for lack of a better phrase, preaching to the <laughs> choir. But um, yeah, I'm hoping that religious people can, can read the book or or watch the film and get something out of it. Maybe not become atheists themselves. I'm not trying to necessarily convert people, but um, maybe make them see atheists in a different way. So yeah. make atheists hopefully see themselves differently and their community differently, but also religious people, how they see atheists. You know, Maybe they won't see us as, as boogeymen uh, anymore and kind of see us with more compassion now. Well, there certainly are so many myths uh, about atheists, and uh, we get slammed in the Bible. Mm -hmm. we're, we're fools. We haven't done any good. Yeah. There's uh, so many people make assumptions, ridiculous assumptions, that if you don't believe in their God, you must be a bad person. Right. So I think that's why your message about joy and purpose is so important. So that really is the takeaway, isn't it, from your book? Yeah, absolutely. That that you know. We are not terrible people. We, um, we are wonderful and we have joy and meaning just like religious people do. And in fact, like I said before, you know, these questions really matter. You know, it matters if there's an afterlife or not. It matters if this is the only life you have. It really does, I think, change the way you want to live your life. If this is all you have, I think that really does fundamentally change kind of your priorities. And you, you told us that a Christian minister read your book and had a comment about yeah. how he wanted to show the film to all his friends or something. Yeah, I was doing a screening of the film in Phoenix, Arizona, and uh, during the Q&A, a guy stood up at the end and said, hey, I just want to let you know I'm a, a Christian. I'm actually a pastor here in Phoenix, and I just want to thank you for changing the way I think about atheists. Wow. It was uh, amazing. To get back to what Ju Julia was saying. Yeah. Uh, this very, as you say, it's very important whether there's an afterlife or not. How how you lead your life, and Emily Dickinson said, um, because it doesn't last, that's what makes life so precious. Right. So I think that many freethinkers, non-believers, do have a very different perspective on living in this world. And of course, you've also shown the diversity of musicians and scientists and authors and activists who are making this world better. Right. Right. So. Um you're a busy person, taking pictures yes. and uh, making movies. You're working on a new project now. Uh, this book is called A Better Life. What's mm -hmm. the next project you're working on? The next project is actually a film called A Better Death, um, mm -hmm. and it's following the story of Dave Warnock, who is a former Christian pastor who deconverted and was recently diagnosed with ALS, Lou Gehrig's disease, and following his story and his life. So it's kind of a companion piece, in a sense, to the, to the other film. This one is talking about how we see our mortality as atheists, how we see death as, as atheists. Yeah, because when I was a preacher, I used to say that if you don't have a faith in the afterlife, you're nihilistic, it's meaningless, you have the despair, and you're going to die with emptiness. And yet we know that's not true, and you're mm -hmm. actually going to film, you're filming what? He has, what, a couple of years to live, yeah. basically? Yeah, as far as we, I mean, that's, it's a, anyone's guess at this point what the doctors say, but yeah, it's not, not, a, not a lot of time left. So he's really um, kind of grabbing life by the, by the horns and, and you know, showing how he can live 
kind of with that mortality in his in his uh, mindset. So if he converts to Islam or Muniism <laughs> or Hinduism at the end, you're going to film that, right? Absolutely, wow. yeah. Mormonism, yeah, that'll He's be the truth. He's not going to do that. He's not no, going. No, no. Well, you hear all these myths of all these people who, at the last moment, they, you know, right. Converted. Christopher uh, Hitchens, I think people said people that about said him that, as well. Yeah, they said that about Luther Burbank. Yeah, you know, the famous scientist, uh, mm -hmm. which wasn't true. Right. But, uh, right. I think most of the time it's not true. Yeah. So we just have a couple minutes left. Yeah. Um, what did you learn on the road in talking to this diversity of atheists and, and in showing the film? Um, one thing I loved about the the tour that I did was uh, seeing this worldwide community of atheists going from everywhere from Iceland to Singapore to New Zealand um, to South Africa, all these places, a worldwide community. And we, we, we often think that, you know, it's, I'm only in my a local community of atheists, but there is a worldwide network of people out there who are kind of kindred spirits in a sense, who um, who value the same things as we do. And um, it was amazing to visit those communities all over the world. Well, thank you so much, Chris, for joining us today and for bringing joy and meaning into our lives. Thanks for having me. The book is A Better Life, 100 Atheists Speak Out on Joy and Meaning in a World Without God. Thank you for watching Free Thought Matters. Because Free Thought Matters. Hi, I'm Steve Pinker. In my book, Enlightenment Now, I show that the world has become a better place as reason has been overcoming superstition and tribalism. But the values of the Enlightenment are under attack. That's why I'm a proud member of the Freedom From Religion Foundation, the nation's largest association of free thinkers working to keep state and church separate. Please join me in supporting the Freedom From Religion Foundation to ensure that our government is driven not by religion, but by reason.